good morning. Uh, so today I'll just do a little chat in the beginning again and then we will do a little bit of movement. If there's any requests, um, if you're watching and you're feeling like you want to move a certain body part, let me know and we can work on that a little bit. Um, otherwise, today I really wanted to talk about um, kind of finding your own alignment. Um, Hello. Um, so basically, I watched this little talk on Sunday, and it really inspired me as of the question of during this quarantine, when all of those things you think you needed. Hi, Samara. <laughs> um, I was just saying earlier, Samara, too. If you need anything today, like body wise, let me know. We can work on it a little bit. Um, but anyway, so when all the essentials and these necessities and getting your hair done and your nails done and buying new makeup and consume, consume, consume is kind of stripped away to where now we're sitting at home and we're like, okay, maybe I shouldn't go to the grocery store today because I can wait a couple days and then I can make it one trip instead of having to have two trips. And so it's really more um, of sitting with yourself and recognizing what you actually need and what you're actually wanting at a soul level. Um, so I think it's really important during this time with all of these uh, like things that we thought were essential being stripped away where you're just kind of sitting with yourself and what am I going to do? What, what would fulfill me with joy right now? Like how do I want to spend my time? Um, and just really ask yourself that question like what is it that my soul needs? What is it that fills up my cup and feeds me? And who am I really stripped down to this bare bones of just being able to have food and maybe go to Home Depot and get a plant if you want to be a little risky like I did. Um, but yeah, so I just wanted to touch on that and just kind of how during this time it's so important to ask yourself those questions like, um, is painting right now going to fill me up? Is um, cooking myself a meal going to fill me up? Uh, what, what do I really want to cultivate in my life and how do I want to use this time to make that happen? Um, so some questions that I got on Sunday were like, what am I longing for? Um, what is my soul craving? And what am I willing to do to create that thing that I'm longing for? Um, so for me personally, I can just share that I really missed teaching yoga a lot, as you can probably tell. Um, I miss doing art all the time. I just really miss kind of um, listening to what my heart is asking for rather than listening to what my head is asking for, especially with all the societal pressures and everything that happen around, especially money. Um, so I think those are some really good questions to go over and just use this time as a catalyst, it's the corona catalyst, to plant your seeds and feed them and water them and nourish them so they grow into beautiful plants and flowers. Yay, Amanda, how are you? Um, so yeah, so we're, we're going to kind of work on just asking that soul question, who am I as a human being? Um, she kind of mentioned humans have been in the state of human doing rather than human being, and we are human beings. Um, so where in our life are we just doing, 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 doing without any sort of fulfillment um, get, like coming back to us? Um, so really take the time and question, like, why am I doing this? Is this filling up my soul? Is this making me happy? Um, and not always having to see an end result just being there in that moment. So for example, um, I let's say I really enjoy painting. And sometimes your mind just goes in like, the instance like, okay, I'd like to paint. What can I do? How can I sell that? How can I make money doing this? And then it, it strips away the actual enjoyment of the task. So maybe today try and do things without an end goal. Just take paint and put it all over a canvas or something without any concern about what the end result will be and just kind of see how that feels for you. Um, so I think that just in order to find that soul alignment and fulfillment, you really have to question who is my authentic self. So what what am I deep in my core? What do I love? What do I love to do? Um, what do I like to wear? How do I like to express myself? And then dropping the fear around that because I really believe that when you're in full alignment, not only are there so many synchronicities that pop up in your life, um, 
it literally just got goosebumps, but like the past couple of days, just so many things have been aligning. Not only like the classes I've been taking have been doing the same breath work and stuff and they have nothing to do with each other. Or, you know, just a friend pops up and I'm really looking for a photographer and my friend Jamie pops up and she's like, hey, I'm, I actually went to school for photography. I can take pictures for you. It's just, it's the craziest thing. Um, so just really, once you're being your, as authentic as you can with yourself and with others, that's where you find that space of alignment and that's when abundance can start flowing in and synchronicity start happening. So really question today, where is that for you? And where do you feel best? And where do you feel um, like you're on your path? Um, and I, if you're projecting out in the world, those things that make you the happiest, that's where that energy exchange happens. You're putting out that positive vibration and you're going to just be calling that right back in. Um, so yeah, just use the power of your mind and manifestation and question, question, question everything and just really, really strip down to the core and see and ask yourself what fills me up and see how you can incorporate that into your life now and how maybe you could carry it through into your life when this has subsided. Um, I don't think everything's going to go back to normal. Um, I definitely don't hope it does. I hope a lot of things change, but just kind of think, how are you going to be part of um, the change? And how are you going to cultivate change in your own world that'll kind of expand and uh, reach other people? So I really think that in order to do that from a really authentic place, you have to question for yourself first, what is my soul calling? And how am I going to bring this into my life and into other people's life and incorporate it all together. <laughs> so I hope that made sense for you. But um, yeah, just like, what are your needs? Drip it down to the essentials, get down to a soul level and be a human being and stop being a human doing. Uh, let's see, what did you want? Body work, neck and upper shoulder area are very stiff and I've had a hard time loosening them up. Perfect. I was thinking of doing neck today anyway. Um, that is definitely one of my problem areas. And Yesterday, I worked on my Twitch and my YouTube for like six hours. I was getting so frustrated, um, but I did it and I made it through. I had to step away a couple times and like make tea and be like, okay, I need, I need a moment. Um, but yeah, so sitting all the time and just working on the computer, I feel like my lower back and like upper back and neck and shoulders has been a little stiff. So highly recommend if you have tennis balls or lacrosse balls, um, you can roll on those. It feels so good. Or even just find like really good, like nice pressure points um, on your back and just lay and kind of move your arms around. Um, I could do a class with tennis balls if you guys have some or can find like a lacrosse ball or something that might be kind of fun because they're really awesome. Um, so yeah, we'll just start seated. And then maybe you set an intention for the class. Um, maybe you want to ask questions and see if you receive any answers. Maybe what is my soul calling for? Um, what makes me happy? And just kind of ask those questions and see if you can just open up and receive the answers. Um, I've been getting, <laughs> I've been playing with Sculpey Clay lately and I, every time I close my eyes, I have another vision of an earring to make. So <laughs> I've just been using my meditations to spark ideas for creativity. Um, so see if this, brings up anything for you. Uh, so we'll just start seated, legs crossed, eyes closed, and you can just start to deepen your breath. Feel how that one simple breath brings you down. And notice how the second breath brings you even further to the ground, really planting through the sit bones, relax through the face. And then we're really slowly just going to drop our head to the right and just hold it there, relax through the shoulders. If you want a little more, you can bring your left hand down to the mat and touch the fingertips on the floor. It kind of brings a longer line across the shoulder. You might even feel it um, kind of on top of the shoulder. Just take a few breaths here. Really allow the exhales to loosen any of the um, tension and the muscles in the neck. And on an inhale, we'll just come back up to center. 
And then exhale, drop the head to the left. So left ear, left shoulder. Shoulders are down and back. And again, if you want to bring the right fingertips to touch the ground next to you, you can. And just breathe into that space. Really allow the exhales to allow that to expand and loosen. Hyper focus your awareness in that area. And with every exhale, imagine the muscle tension just loosening and melting. We'll take another big breath here. Inhale in the nose. Big exhale. Then inhale back to center. And we're just going to drop our head down, grab our knees, and kind of round back through the spine. So you really want to, you're pushing your knees into your hands here and also pulling your knees back. So you're kind of using op opposing forces, pushing the knees forward, pulling the knees back with your hands. And drop the chin. See how much of a double chin you can make for yourself. And really stretch through the backs of the shoulders. It should feel really nice in the upper shoulders. And that's where I have a lot of tightness and stiffness. Just take a couple breaths here. Don't worry about engaging the belly. Just really focus on that stretch through the shoulders. And then if it feels good, you can move your head side to side. Maybe doing like little half turns. So lifting up on the left, feel that stretch across the neck, and then going back down, lifting up to the right. Exhaling forward. Inhale up. Exhale down. Inhale up. Do one more on each side. Big exhale, big inhale, exhale to the center, and then inhale, come on back up. We're just going to take it the opposite direction, so you can lean forward, you're kind of looking up, chins up, hands are still on the knees. Just get a nice stretch through the upper chest, so you're pulling your shoulders back towards each other. And just breathe here, feel that back kind of muscle work happening in the upper and mid back. Shoulders down, elbows in towards your sides. And then take a big inhale here. Exhale, round. Inhale, come back forward. So we're just doing a little cat cow um, with just a, in a seated position. So we're just kind of getting the spine nice and loose, rocking forward and back. Take two more, inhale forward, exhale round through the spine, really pull the belly button back into the spine, pull through the knees, inhale forward, exhale, inhale come back up to a neutral spine and just hang out there for a moment. Then we're just going to come up and sit on your knees if it's comfortable for you. Um, you can either sit back down so your butt's on your heels or you can be up. Um, if you're up and your knees hurt, you can roll your mat back so you have a little extra padding. Um, other, either way is perfectly fine for this. And we're just going to take both of our hands and clasp them behind your back. And just leave them there and really pull the elbows towards each other. And for this, you want your um, legs about hip width distance apart. Engage and squeeze through the thighs, squeeze through the belly. And then use the pull of the elbows and the push of the hands to just lift up through the chest. Maybe tip your head back. So when I'm doing this, I really like to imagine a string pulling straight from my heart center straight up. So you're working up, not back. And breathe. And this you don't necessarily have to go back super far. Just really feel the stretch through the front of the shoulders and the chest. And 
One more big inhale. And then exhale, come seated down onto the knees and we'll just pause. Let the back settle. Um, a lot of times for me, back bends are really intense, especially camel pose. Um, I, it makes me really nauseous for some reason and kind of like lightheaded, but it's just, it's so heart opening and you're kind of getting into the hips and it can have that sensation. So just take it really nice and easy. Um, you always want to work into those really slow. And then inhale, we're going to come to tabletop. And then we're just going to thread the needle on the right side. So you can bring the right arm up. Exhale, bring it through and lay down on that shoulder. And hopefully you can all see me. <laughs> and there's a couple things you can do with your hand. I really like to press my left hand into the mat so I get a little bit of a deep turn and a little bit more into that right shoulder blade. You can bring your left hand straight out in front of you. You can bring it up and wrap it behind you in a little half bind. Whatever feels best in your shoulder. And really breathe into that shoulder blade. And then on an inhale, press that left hand in. Bring the right arm all the way up. And exhale, release. And we'll just take the other side. So left arm comes all the way up on an inhale. Exhale, thread through, coming down to that left shoulder. And again, if you want, you can push into that right hand, deepening the twist a little bit. And just notice the places that are really tight. Those might be really good focal points if you do have tennis balls at home. One more big inhale. And exhale. And then inhale, bring that left arm back up to the sky. Exhale down. Then we're just gonna tuck our toes, press through the legs, come into a downward facing dog. You really want to, in the beginning, you can bend your knees a lot, get that length through the spine from the crown of the head out the tailbone. And then exhale the legs straight. I took a yoga class this morning with Nuria and I'm a little sore. <laughs> and then on an inhale, just walk your hands all the way back to your feet. We'll take them about mat left, mats with distance apart. Grab opposite elbows and you can hang. Sway back and forth. Really feel that stretch through the hamstrings. Maybe shake your head a little bit. And then we're gonna roll all the way up, nice and slow, slight bend in the knees. And you're gonna come in a stance, it doesn't matter what foot's in front, but we're just gonna bring both feet kind of almost in like we're about to hit goddess pose. So they're pretty far apart, maybe like three or four feet. Toes are slightly out. And then just bend the knees, shift back and forth. Maybe bounce a little bit. Feel the opening up of the hips. And then on an inhale, see if you can lift your right heel off the mat. Feel that leg shake. Take a big inhale, exhale, drop it down, inhale, left heel up, couple breaths, big inhale, exhale, release, keep those knees bent, I know it's burning, use your breath. We're just gonna drop our hands, um, you can have the fingertips coming on the insides of the uh, thighs. And take a big inhale, press through the hands into the knees. And then exhale, drop the right shoulder, look over the left. So you're dropping the right shoulder right down into the middle. 
See if you can notice where it stretches. It should be right behind the shoulder a little bit. And then inhale back to center. Exhale the other direction. Big inhale, center. Exhale. Last one, inhale, center. Exhale, drop the left shoulder. And then on an inhale, bring your arms all the way up, press through the legs. Exhale, bring the hands to heart center. And pause. See if you notice your heart beating in your chest. And then inhale, we're just going to step back, um, feet together. And then again, we're going to take the hands, clasp them behind the back. And this time, we're going to bring the arms straight and really lift up through those shoulders. So you're squeezing those shoulder blades together. Um, my elbows, I do this kind of wrong, just to let you know. You shouldn't be hyperextending your arms like I am. You should have bent elbows like this. Really pull the shoulder blades together. Pull the elbows together. Engage through the belly, protect the low back, light up the legs, squeezing all the muscle to the bone. Feel that opening through the heart space. Take one more big inhale, maybe tip the head back. And exhale, release. Shake it out a little bit. <laughs> Maybe dance around a little, shake your wrists. <laughs> this is one of my favorite things to do in yoga is just shake. <laughs> All right, now we're going to bring it back down into a seated position. Um, let's get in the toes a little bit. So let's actually go on our knees. And then you want to tuck your toes under. And then this is really going to feel amazing. <laughs> you can sit back on your heels. Make sure those um, pinky toes are tucked. Reach down and grab them. And this is where we're going to sit for a little bit. So close your eyes. Breathe. If this is absolute sheer pain for you, come up a little bit. Just leave the toes tucked. This is really good for the feet, for the toes, especially the arches of the feet if you have problems there. Just make sure you're... Um, Heels aren't like sickled, they're parallel to each other, kind of heel to sit bone, heel to sit bone. Really use your breath, breathe through it. Just a couple more breaths. Big inhale, exhale, one more big inhale, big exhale, and finally inhale, come forward really carefully and slowly untuck the toes, maybe kick them out a little bit, and kick out the feet, get the circulation moving back in there. We'll just take a seat, coming sit back in easy pose. You can lay down for this if you'd like, if you want to do like a little mini savasana for meditation. Definitely up to you. But you just want to plant in through the sit bones. Again, I like to use um, the image of like a outlet plugging in. So you're plugging in to the earth, plugging into the energy and the source. Take some breaths. Shoulders are down, belly's nice and relaxed. Relax through the hips. And then just for a little while, I want you to do alternate nostril breathing, but without using your hand. So this is just gonna be more of like a mental alternate nostril. So you're gonna imagine you're breathing in the left nostril, out the right, in the right, out the left. 
in the left, out the right, and back and forth and back and forth. Um, you can do this with um, your fingers, so you're plugging nostrils, but today we're just gonna do it with the mind and see what happens. So you can take a big inhale through both nostrils. Exhale out the mouth. And then just imagine inhaling through the left nostril, out the right, in the right, out the left, in the left, out the right. And just continue with that pattern. See if you can lengthen the breaths maybe with every inhale. See if you can make it a little bit more drawn out and longer. Just keep breathing, keep relaxing through the low belly, through the shoulders. through the face. We'll do this for about another minute. So just keep focusing at other, every other nostril, just with your mind, not with your hand. Exhale out the right nostril. Then take an inhale with both nostrils. Big exhale out the mouth. And then you can return to normal breathing in and out the nose. And then I just want you to ask yourself, what does your soul look like? What color is it? Imagine that filling up your belly. What does it feel like? What is that happiness or joy or alignment or purpose? What does that feel like? when you find it. And hold that color and that feeling together in your belly. Can you see what it looks like? It doesn't necessarily have to be like exactly the career you would be in right now or the house you want to be in. It could be something really small, like a shape. So it's the color, the feeling, the shape, or kind of what it looks like. All just kind of blending together in your imagination, but imagine them being right in the like the middle of your belly. Imagine what the color feels like. Maybe if you're seeing red, you think it might, it feels really nice and warm and fuzzy. Maybe if it's blue, it's more kind of got the water quality. vast like lush fields or forests. And 
Now see if you can receive one word that your soul would use. So we've got your soul's color, your soul's feeling, your soul's shape. And now what's your soul's word? And I want you to hold on to those. If it's not just one word that came up, that's okay too. This is just an exercise for you. So however you perceive it or do it is perfect. But I want you to ask yourself, what sorts of things would bring you those feelings, those colors, those words, those shapes? Maybe today you could do like a little journaling exercise and see what that looks like. Put everything in the middle and have just little points coming off of it, kind of like looks like the sun. And see those things that you need to fill up your soul, to feel that beautiful, colorful, warm, fuzzy, happy, blissful way. And I bet some of those things that you're thinking right now that would fill your soul up are totally tangible things that you can be doing in your life. For example, one of mine is just every morning I wake up and Tigger is next to me and the kitten's on my chest and then Rue's face is looking down on me like, when are we having breakfast? <laughs> so I get to grab them all at the same time and cuddle them all in the morning. And it's just something that's so simple but makes me so happy and so fulfilled. Just a couple more breaths here, eyes closed, really holding on to those images and feelings. And then with your breath, you could repeat the mantra, um, I am open to receiving an infinite stream of bliss. So just repeating, I am open to receiving an infinite stream of bliss. You can question to yourself, what does that bliss look like? Where can I align myself to be more on my path to receive it better? Or just kind of what can you do to really waken up the, your authentic self or like your soul inside or your spirit inside? And you can take your palms and bring them together, rub them together. One last time, really feel and imagine the color, the feeling, the shape. And pass that to your heart with your hands together. Again, you can repeat the mantra. I am open to receiving an infinite stream of bliss. And then you can open your hands, bring them up, and you can just blow the prayer into the ethers. So everyone knows, and you know, that you're open to receiving an infinite stream of bliss. Now we'll just take one big inhale and exhale together. So big inhale in the nose. Exhale out the mouth. You can pop your eyes open. I hope you guys all have a beautiful day. Um, I did decide to... <laughs> 
the Marley. Oh yes, I have tapestries everywhere. That is, this used to be like a storage closet and I spent all day one day um, like cleaning it out and scrubbing it down and I turned it into a little yoga studio, so it's perfect. Um, but yeah, so I'm gonna be on here every day except for Friday and Sunday, I have decided. If you have any requests or need anything, let me know. Otherwise, check out my YouTube page. I have, I put, I think, pretty much every video up on there. Um, from my recordings so that it's not so hard to find on Facebook um, or Twitch if you don't have Twitch. So go check those out. Let me know what you think. Let me know what you need and I will be back here tomorrow. <laughs> Hope you guys all have a really good day. Love you Amanda. I'm so happy you came on. <laughs>